Yeah, so um, obviously, um, as a, as a big corporate, that's in our mandate in our regular products. So again, in this toilet, ultimately we want to get it down to a 40 milliliter flush. So if you think that a lot of toilets are still on nine to 10 liters, um, that's our way of even for washers, uh, because a lot of uh, a lot of these markets are washers, they're not wipers. So even for, for washers, ultimately we'd like to, there's a big behavior change, we'd like them to wash over the toilet, but wash more efficiently. So wash and flush uh, with, with a very small amount of, uh, of um, uh, water. Uh, also, this is unique in that it doesn't use sawdust or chemicals, which means that it's one of the, um, it, and it collects all of the waste out of the environment. No, we don't. So it's a very good point. We don't separate, and, and we've, we've put our foot down on that. We don't separate in the toilet. It can be separated in the collection system. Uh, so again, my, luckily my R&D partner is a, is a PhD in biochemistry, so with, uh, with 35 years in, in the whole fecal sludge and everything. So, so apparently according to him, uh, no. Um, but, uh, but also I, I have to say that we've also done, Lixel as a company has done a, a lot of research in eco-sanitation and we have eco-sanitation toilets for the mid-market, not for the BOP. But um, this, the holy grail is the circular economy. Uh, but you have to be careful about how much of it is really a resource. And, you know, through our research, uh, it's not, a, if, it, if it was really as amazing as everyone would like it to be, everyone would be doing it. So, so there's a few hurdles there. My name is Sayantan, I'm from IntelliCap. Um, my question is uh, to uh, entrepreneurs who are uh, like Swadha. Uh, now, what are the difficulties that you face in scaling? I mean, I know that many uh, other entrepreneurs are also working in this space like uh, Sarmek or Saraplast, uh, Upaya. Now, the, 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 so the question is, what are the uh, difficulties you face in scaling? And is finance or access to finance one of the major difficulties? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so uh, just first, I think I'll just make a clarification so my answer is more clear. Uh, the examples of the companies that you took, like Upaya or Saraplas, they are uh, product manufacturers, right? They have a particular product, and then they go to multiple channels to uh, sell their product. Uh, Versus, uh, we are completely different because, uh, as I explained the value chain, we are a distribution company. So we integrate and we distribute. And so we partner with people like Seraplast and so on to procure material from them after doing our R&D and being satisfied that whether that product is uh, quality-wise correct or not, and whether the, if it's affordable or not, and if we need to make some R&D changes to make it more affordable. So we do that R&D work inside. In terms of uh, challenges on scale-up, I guess uh, looking at uh, you know any other uh, distribution integrator company, uh, the key challenge for us is the supply chain. So if currently we're operating uh, Pan Odisha, which is what our base is in India, and also in parts of Maharashtra and MP, but the question for us is, uh, now if I have to do this Pan India and have exactly the same kind of supply chain delivering within seven days uh, to my entrepreneur from the date of uh, order, which is what our commitment to our entrepreneurs is, how should I do it? Um, so how should I bring ICT, for example, which is what we are now working on uh, by a you know, one of its kind platform by the name of Wash Software as a Service, wherein everything right from back end to the front end can be put on an ICT mobile based platform. So that's one main issue, I would say. Um, second main issue, uh, I don't think we, honestly uh, that access to finance is really a problem. Um, in the space of sanitation uh, at this time, because we all know that there's a lot of focus on wash, uh, not only in India, but globally. So honestly, if you know your model is good, you've proven uh, the concept, and you've shown basic level of uh, efficiency and scalability, uh, I guess the money is just around. Like you have investors who will believe in your model. So the real problem is basically having the right kind of efficiency for your distribution channel and uh, becoming an ace on your supply chain management. 
one of the, the things is, as well um, that the Toilet Board identified and, and the reason why um, Unilever, Kimberly Clark, Fairmanish, and, and Lixel um, started the Toilet Board is to provide the capacity building needs. So they also saw, echoing what Garima was saying, that the money wasn't the problem. Everybody agrees that we need more toilets and we need more sanitation systems operating and the money is there, um, but the, the skill set was not there in terms of driving that value chain as a business, driving businesses at every point of that value chain. And so um, part of the genesis of the, of the toilet board w was really um, for, uh, for corporate leaders um, to provide that, um, that capacity building and, and business rigor um, in the sector, recognizing that the money is there, but the money is only there and <laughs> investors like IntelliCap um, have certain requirements and, uh, and a lot of the businesses in the sector were not meeting those commercial requirements. And so that's part of the, um, the service that we're trying to provide. So also, I, I think um, from, from what I've seen um, in my limited time is what you've just touched on. I mean, the thing about sanitation is it's not just not a product, it's, it's a whole value chain. And I think one of the biggest problems, well, we see as well, is that we don't sell directly to a customer. Uh, we need a service provider to, uh, to service a community. So we're reliant on that service provider being present. Um, and ideally a big utility, but um, they're very far and few between, for example. And I think, um, I think so far, you know, everyone has worked in silos. It's been very disconnected. And I think that's, from my perspective, the biggest issue to scale is how do we get everybody together at the same time on the same platform to work together um, as a package. And I think until we do, there's always going to be a problem in scaling quickly in this area. From a, a business perspective, uh, you, you look at the, uh, the consumer segment um, that, uh, that, that fits your product or the, you know, the, the, uh, the segment that is, uh, is most likely to uh, desire your product. Um, and that can be at, at different, um, different levels of the chain. Um, we are focused on low income consumers. So all of our business models are addressing low income. But as Garima was asking, there's different levels of, of low income. Um, and our NGO IGO partners are, are helping us to, um, to, to look at um, making sure that we understand those segments, we understand which business solutions are addressing which segment so that no one gets left behind, um, as they tell us. So um, that sort of our approach is really a segmentation approach and, and what are the best um, products and services for each um, segment and business models. And where there aren't business models, um, we're working with our, um, our NGO partners to uh, to develop uh, business models that will that will reach all segments. You know that the the last mile is is the most difficult for business. Um, absolutely, um, but there are many levels um, uh, of segments within the the low income category. And I think we can take one more question. Uh, we are a manufacturer of stainless steel portable smart toilets. So, the focus really mostly is on uh, manufacturing and innovating different toilet designs and putting up toilets. Until unless they are uh, maintained properly, mostly with respect to the public or the communal toilets, so the sustainability part is lost. So I just wanted to ask with you uh, that are there any mentees with TBC working on the business models of maintenance and sustainability part of it? And what, what could be a better model that, or, or a model that you come across as such? So this is, a, this is a key area that, that has been identified as a, as a challenge in the chain. So um, lots of innovation around, uh, around the toilet um, and uh, toilet for different contexts. Um, more and more um, innovation uh, around waste treatment, uh, waste to resources at the other end of the chain. Um, but the connection points, um, so part of what um, uh, some of the businesses talked about, about the delivery systems, about the cleaning systems, and about the maintenance um, systems, um, we've seen less of. So we are absolutely looking um, to complete that part of the chain, as, as Vicky said, um, so that we can work together um, to deliver the, the full package um, solution. So we'd, uh, we are familiar with, uh, with GARV and, and are very excited about the propositions uh, that you have. From, uh, from a multinational perspective, um, where do you see the future of this business of sanitation? Uh, before I begin there, uh, yeah, uh, before I begin answering your que question, we see a lot of things moving in terms of sanitation whenever we get most of the projects. And like I said, cleanliness is one of the most important aspect for customers in every category. Along with that, there is Swaj Bharat Abhiyan that is going on currently in India. So even the Prime Minister is involved and he wants everything to be clean. 
we see a lot of MNCs coming to us, asking us for working on this particular category. So for us, I think it's a win-win situation from both the ends, because working with you, working with TBC, we will know which of our technologies are really effective, which of them will really work. We will have a lot of learnings. The same learnings we can incorporate in some other projects where we can share the knowledge with them. And overall, I think going forward, a lot of learnings, a lot of potential that we see in uh, future of firm manage. Thank you. Thank you, Giri. Uh, Mr. Rajan, where do you see the, the future of, um, of sanitation in, um, in Bangladesh and beyond for plastics? We have just started in sanitation. Uh, although we have been doing Satapan for four years now, uh, the volume is so big that uh, we are not able to reach to every place. Uh, now, not only the Satapan thing, now we are into superstructure as well. So we need support from TBC, we need support from Feminist, Lexil, so that we can have a sustainable, long-lasting solution in the toilet sector. So there is a big potential. We have just started. So we need everybody's support to go about it. There is a uh, success in um, uh, American standard Satapan. So that will repeat in this uh, super sector as well. So we are positive on this. And there is a great, great potential for going through with the TBC, uh, Lexil, and the feminists with us. Thank you. Well, I think the, the thing of, about this is, is it's endless. I mean, nobody really knows huge potential, but really how, how much can you realize? So I think if I limit it just to our invention now um, and the short term, because, of course, everyone talks about the, the lovely hockey stick. So before the hockey stick goes off into the stratosphere, um, I'd like to see um, a revenue stream of about $10 million within four years. Um, so for Swada, our short term, uh, you know, focus is uh, to aim at breaking even uh, by mid next year. Um, both from company's perspective and also from the entrepreneur's perspective in terms of reducing our attrition rates uh, to a single digit. Uh, the medium term goal, uh, which we've already started working on, is to go global in terms of trying and see how this model can be uh, adopted by other players and other countries uh, for them to replicate the model. So for example, we've already, we're in talks with few uh, businesses in Africa and also in Haiti uh, to see how uh, you know, this model gets accepted uh, in those areas. Thank you, Grima. And uh, I'm Canadian uh, originally, so I, I love the hockey stick uh, reference. <laughs> and certainly in terms of the business of sanitation, we love the hockey stick uh, reference. Um, and uh, just from the, the Toilet Board Coalition's perspective on the future um, of the businesses that, that we're looking at now, um, affordable housing um, is, a, is a focus for us um, going into the future. We're looking for uh, large-scale affordable housing projects that have had trouble um, with the sanitation um, aspect, and we've learned that many of them do. Many affordable housing projects for the low-income segments that we're, we're looking at delivering sanitation to do not have toilets included. Um, the, the Toilet Board Coalition this year in the, the United Nations Year of, of Housing um, in the Quito Conference in October um, is looking to make an announcement um, of a project to do the thought leadership around bringing sanitation into these affordable housing projects. Um, and so if, uh, if there are some builders in the room, um, we want to speak to you. Small-scale uh, waste treatment. Um, waste treatment systems are, are big, cumbersome, and expensive. Um, we need to make that work differently um, for these markets, and there's a lot of innovators working on this. Um, we have a, a cohort of 12 that we're looking at now, but um, there, there's more to be done, and there's some connection points, as has been identified, that still need to be made. We're looking for you. Um, digital, uh, mobile for sanitation. Who would have thought we could bring um, digital into the bathroom? But we all know that we do. <laughs> so um, we are looking at um, digitizing uh, the sanitation sector from the beginning. It's a nascent sector now. The opportunity is now to leapfrog to digital. Um, there's a lot of interesting opportunities um, uh, borrowing from sectors like, uh, like solar, pay-as-you-go um, uh, solar, um, uh, borrowing from 
understanding uh, aspirations and what is driving people. Uh, if we can uh, drive people, uh, more people have mobile phones than, uh, than toilets. If we can drive people to phones, uh, we need to be able to drive people to toilets and, and why not use digital to do that. Um, sanitation marketing um, as well. There's a demand issue around sanitation. So not everybody um, uh, wants sanitation and uh, if we need to, um, to change that. And the circular economy, this is, this is all about connecting all of the dots um, we've been talking about the opportunities to use the waste um, in biogas and, and biomass, but um, we have a, a circular economy team now that is looking at um, all kinds of business models um, that, uh, that could be um, developed throughout the sanitation value chain um, that we haven't even thought of yet. So we're looking into all of these areas. If, if you're a business person that is working in any of these areas, um, we want to work with you and, and fill out the chain. So. Um, Thank you very much. So some people don't want sanitation as it is now is, is the key. I think everybody wants sanitation, but the trouble is I wouldn't have, some of the san I wouldn't have a lot of the sanitation I've seen out there. So it's up to us to, to create the sanitation of the future that everybody wants. Change the conversation. I love it. Thanks, Vicky. So if you have more questions, please approach the, the panel. And thank you very much.